Some of my first memories of music were actually standing uh, in my family room at home on a pillow. I was like three or four years old. We had this big pillow. And I would stand on the pillow and turn on the, the Star Wars soundtrack on the stereo system and actually wave my arms around like I was a conductor. I enjoyed music. I loved going to music class in elementary school. When the time came to choose a band instrument, I actually ended up choosing the trombone because I thought it'd be the easiest one to play because there are no buttons. It turns out I was wrong about it being that easy to play, uh, but I, I really enjoyed it. And that sort of, that sort of drew, that's sort of, I think where, where it all started was just sort of, you know, listening to orchestral music and movie music and, and sort of being inspired by that. And, and even after that, I would listen to J.J. Johnson and Coltrane and, and all kinds of jazz artists. Glenn Miller was, I loved Glenn Miller when I was in like fifth grade. I kind of came into the into the professional trombone world a little bit backwards. My undergraduate preparation, my undergraduate degree was in music education, and I used to actually be a band director. And uh, I happened to go to graduate school to study trombone performance as a as a way to get into conducting full time and to conducting at the college level. But I also sort of discovered in that process that I really really love playing the trombone, and that I also have something to say. I think in the trombone world, and, and I have something to offer to students. For me, the the background in music education shapes a lot of the way I deal with the studio. I do have a background in conducting, I do have a background in music ed. So that's one of the reasons why I view the Trimone Ensemble as being really important too, and making sure that's a quality experience for our students. It takes a tremendous amount of work uh, and a tre tremendous amount of effort, even when you don't really feel like it sometimes. Uh, to really be successful in this field. It's, it's a deeply competitive field. Um, and I think that the students who come here understanding that there's work to be done and it's not always gonna be fun or easy, but that it's satisfying and that the reward at the end of the road is worth it. Uh, I think that's the kind of student who's gonna be really, really successful. In terms of non-musical things, I think one of the things that makes a student really successful here is a student who's deeply inquisitive, who doesn't want to just know how I get from point A to point B, but why it's going to work. Why did this composer write this piece in this way? Why is this piece constructed? What was the historical context? What's the political context of any piece of music we're studying? I think those are the things that also drive success or help enable students to find success in this field. Finding those points and knowing where, each of, where that sort of peak moment of each phrase is and really aiming towards it and getting carrying the energy across. I currently play in uh, several professional orchestras in the region. So I play principal trombone in the Akron Symphony. I play principal trombone in the Youngstown Symphony. I have also have positions in the, in the Lansing Symphony. Uh, and I also fill in all the time in the Toledo Symphony. I sort of view playing, uh, you know, professional playing and playing in these ensembles as a really important part of, of my continued growth as a musician and as a teacher. It also gives me a window into what it's like to actually do the job. Um, most of our students want to end up playing at least someday in a professional orchestra, whether it's a full-time orchestra, or whether it's a regional orchestra while they're teaching somewhere. They want to have that experience of playing in a professional group. And by maintaining an active professional life myself outside of the conservatory, I'm able to sort of keep my finger on the pulse of what it is that's going on. What are the trends? What are the things that people want to hear in auditions? Uh, what are the important characteristics that, that uh, about a player that people want to hear when, when you're behind a screen and you're playing an audition for a professional orchestra? By practicing what I preach uh, to the students, that I, I feel like I help prepare them uh, in a way that's authentic and help prepare them for what the, what the professional music world really is like and what the business actually is.